magazine. And we have brought... of the mad biggies here, uh, artists, writers, to talk about that magazine. We want to have fun, we want to learn about the magazine, but mainly we want to have a fashlugging about Jazebi, if you recall. <laughs> Made me laugh a lot. And uh, we also have uh, uh, a absolutely uh, two young men who certainly you would hesitate to bring home uh, <laughs> Well, you'd hesitate to want to marry your daughters, should we put it that way? <laughs> Los Trios Barcas, who are appearing off-Broadway here in New York. Insane, very, very funny from Australia. And they've surfed all the way over here. <laughs> and we also have one of the finest, if not the finest, cabaret artist uh, in America, who is appearing in the Algonquin here in New York to critical acclaim, took Los Angeles by storm, and, and now New York, Julie Wilson. We'll have all this and much more. When we return after this message, all right? <laughs> See this? This, uh, go back. This drawing of Henry Kissinger <laughs> was done by the gentleman to my right who has been illustrating for Mad Magazine for... 30 years. Mort Drucker. In the end, welcome, Mort. And to his left, two from my right, between the two gentlemen on the right, you know, in the <laughs> magazines they do that, is Dick DiBartolo, who has been writing for MAD for 25 years. Dick, welcome, Dick. And Nick, a mere 16 years for you, right? Are you a baby there? I was 30. Like 30 also for you. I don't know where I got that. Nick Meglin, who is a co-editor of Mad Magazine. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. I wrote down some of my favorite ones. I'd like to say to you, I have one grunge, but the eggplant over there. But mainly, I want an explanation of the word mainly. What is the expression you were just saying? It's crackers to slip a rasa, the dropsy and snide. You know, these things have, have kind of flashed back to me because uh, Mad Magazine was one of the very few magazines, and certainly the first, that made me laugh out loud. And why do you think Mad Magazine is still alive and ticking quite well after all these years, Nick? Because it made you laugh out loud. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Had you not laughed out loud, yeah. we would have been out of work a long time ago. Mm. Like a bridge <laughs> over trouble. I was saying just the other day to God, <laughs> who comes from Brooklyn. Not so soon. Notice the artist is very quiet because he just draws his feelings. <laughs> First of all, uh, <laughs> this guy here who has been making us cackle. Now, Mort, you've drawn him many times, but you didn't draw him originally, did you? No. Tell us where Alfred E. Newman... Oh, God, is he wonderful. Uh, and it's not Ted Koppel. Those jokes went out with, uh, you know... Or uh, who's the other one who used to be? Is Prince, Prince Charles. Charles. Prince Charles, yes. <laughs> where did you first see this character? Well, I think that it started from, uh, from a French cartoon many, many years ago, and it was taken from that and embellished by the mad artists who first started doing it. Now, wait a minute. I heard, this is uh, mad trivia, but I had heard that it was actually an ad for a painless dentist around the turn of the century true. to use this face. That's true. Why on earth would they use a face like that? <laughs> With a tooth missing, no less. Some oh. dentist, right? Yeah, and this face... There is something about mad that is television-oriented in a way, isn't there? Well, it's very visual. A lot of people who submit stuff to MAD submit poems or uh, stories, but MAD is totally a visual medium, as is television. Look at this, uh, Mort, Mort Drucker. <laughs> it's fantastic to be immortalized in this magazine. <laughs> a very curious thing about it, Dick, and I do like that subtle button you're wearing. Thank you. Thank you. It says MAD with red lights going around it. <laughs> and I have a cigarette lighter attachment for cabs. It's great. 
Uh, Mad has, <laughs> as far as I know, Mad does not have advertising. And there wasn't there a small attempt once? There was in like issue 10, the uh, publisher Bill Gaines, who's an eccentric in his own head, uh, he, took a, he took a couple of real ads and they were so worried about it, it said real ad, real ad, real ad, real ad. <laughs> and I got a lot of mail saying, sure, now you're not gonna satirize your own advertisers. So the second time they ran the real ad and opposite it, they satirized it. And then people wrote in and said, sure, give them twice the space. <laughs> so Bill said, no ads. Bill said, forget it, no ads. Well, this is a, this is a, a I mean, that's kind of a brave thing. Magazines make a lot of their bucks from, from ads. Most of their bucks. Yeah. Uh, it, there's no question that right up to the wonderful Letterman stuff that, that, that his writers and he uh, 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 do almost every night, it is a direct descendant of Mad. And in fact, there were examples like what? The movie Airplane. Airplane was a Which they actually gave full credit to it. It seems to me that, uh, I don't know if you sense this historically as you sit at your desk writing the word Patrizibi. <laughs> always, always. I think it was Voltaire or maybe it was Ann Landers who once said no. <laughs> Humor is not of the mind, it's of the heart. Now that's very profound. And that's it for me. It is. <laughs> but, can you explain that to me? <laughs> no, I know what you say. Uh, was there a, 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 I understand that the magazine uh, went into a kind of slight valley in that it lost some, some of its subscribers, but now it's getting them back. Well, you, go ahead. Population zero. When, you know, in the old days, every game show, the woman got on, yes, I'm a housewife and I have 17 kids. Yay! Yay, 17 kids! You know, and then now everybody has like 1.8 kids. Or a half a kid, right? Half a kid, right? <laughs> and so uh, there are statistically, <laughs> what is seven eighths of a kid? Uh, statistically less kids, but now uh, the baby boom is growing up and coming back, so the circulation is on an upswing. Does it have anything to do with the fact that kids are not reading as much? Very much. And they're also reading other satire magazines like Time and Newsweek. <laughs> issue. Do you have it with Kennedy and... Uh, oh, yeah, I do. This was one of the cleverest of all time. This uh, was... This was during the election of this 1960. This was during the election. And, yes, this beat the New York Times. At, uh, right. They wanted to play it safe. Right. So, so that, they said, congratulations, John Kennedy. On sale before the New York Times, the minute the election was decided. And then on the other side, of course, congratulations, <laughs> President Nixon. <laughs> Just in case they... We were right both times a few years later, but... Actually, you were. You were. It was a mistake to be right, I guess. Very... Uh, more, when you yes. were seriously when going to the Me uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art and looking at Van Gogh and uh, uh, Rembrandt, you know, did you realize you'd be drawing uh, cartoons for a gang of idiots, as you call yourself? <laughs> they build themselves every month, articles by so-and-so, so-and-so, and the usual gang of idiots. No, actually, uh, I never realized I'd be working for MAD, except that... Uh, I had answered an ad in the newspaper that they were looking for an artist, and uh, the reason I got the job is because it was during the World Series. The Yankees were playing the Dodgers, and Bill Gaines was a Yankee fan. He said, the Dodger fan? Oh, that's why I almost didn't get the job. <laughs> but what happened was, one team won, and that's how I got the job. Was it you who uh, um, thought you had a rejection? Oh, that, that, was, that tell, was... Tell me that story. That goes right okay, there. well, I, I loved Mad at yeah. reading it, and so I submitted an article, and as you know, if you submit any article to any magazine, you have to send a big self-addressed stamped envelope for your manuscript back. Six weeks later, the envelope comes back, my own handwriting, my own stamps, so I threw it in the desk, and then later on I thought maybe it's a handwritten reject so I open the envelope and it's stuffed with cardboard and stapled to the cardboard is a check and it says ha ha thought your material was rejected <laughs> here's a check please call us about future work signed Nick Meglin I love this man <laughs> Check we have a sentence. <laughs> what a great story because typical so so in keeping with the magazine. Now, do you have subscribers around the world and do you have them in odd places? Or? We have subscribers everywhere. And the great thing about Med, you know, if you subscribe, I subscribe to Popular Science 
15 years ago and, and didn't renew, and monthly I still get a card. Are you sure, Mr. DiBartolo? This is, this is really your very last chance. At MAD, when your subscription is over, you get a single card. It says your subscription is over. It says, lucky you. Your subscription is over. If you don't care to renew, you will never hear from us again, period. And, and, and you never do. But we had one subscriber in Suriname, South America. Suriname? Nam, South America. He did not renew. And our publisher thought we should have a subscriber in Suriname, South America. <laughs> he took the entire staff to the man's home. <laughs> 20 of us cost about $40,000, <laughs> but the man did renew. <laughs> A month later, a second person renewed. <laughs> so we doubled our circulation. And so it out. Yeah, and so it out. This is uh, one Moon of lighting. the... Uh, Moonlighting. This is moonlighting. Take off. Uh, this is... This is uh, <laughs> excellent. Uh, some wonderful drawings of... Uh, and you know, people and often ask how we get such detail into the magazine. This is the size of each page of Mad before we reduce it. Oh my goodness. Sometimes they reduce the humor content when they Always. squeeze it down. It does so. pretty well. I read the latest issue in preparation for you guys, you know. I still think it's, it's, it's some of the basic, some of the best basic satire around, if not the oh, very basic. Thank you. Thank you. Basic. No, it is basic because, I don't know, I mean, you know, it can can it clot your brain at uh, 35 or 40? I guess not, huh? No, the only bad thing is if you go to a serious movie, y your mind is so twisted after all these years. Everybody's there going, oh, I can't believe it. I'm going, oh, oh, boy, I know, I know a great line when she walks in the door with the yeah. baby. So it's very hard to they, take any. They literally, story. literally threw me out of the theater when we were seeing Love Story when that guy said, you know, when she said, love means never having to say you're sorry. I was out for two minutes. <laughs> what? They took me out of the theater. They threw me out. Just look at him. That's all you have to know. We'll be right back after this message. You know who Alfred E. Newman is? Uh, that's Ted Koppel's brother, I think. <laughs> Who's Alfred E. Newman? He's the friend of Paul Newman. How about Alfred E. Newman? You know what he does? Alfred E. Newman. He doesn't do much of anything, does he? No, he doesn't.